Hey, thanks for joining us for this uh, second edition of our Off-Grid Living Winter Tips video. We wanted to uh, share with you a few more things we learned from living off-grid in our first winter. And the fact that I'm standing on the only remaining snow on our property is testament that we survived our first winter. And yes, it did surprise a few neighbors who stopped by and said, wait, you were living there all winter? So join us for this video and we'll jump into a few more things we learned on our first winter. In case you haven't watched our other videos, something else that we did to prepare our current situation for winter was build this small cabin. And uh, if it's a, any kind of a reassurance, we're not cabin builders by trade, so you can do it. And it's been really helpful because we've had torrential downpour, extremely high winds, and snow. And the cabin has helped to keep us up out of the mud, dry, and secure. This cabin is not a permanent structure. It was simply a quick fix for winter. We didn't think that we would end up spending the winter in our RV uh, garage, but here we are. And this has helped us to keep everything that we need to keep secure and dry up out of the mud, out of the dirt, inside of a secure place. It also allowed us to place a wood stove inside where we could create warmth when we needed it. So we built this for around $300. We were able to reclaim a barn and a house that was being demolished and we used a lot of that material to build this. It took us about three days and our major expense on the whole entire structure was the clear plastic you see at the top and the chimney for the wood stove. Everything else was probably worth somewhere around $75. So it's very affordable. So if you have a winter climate and you're thinking about winter, try to find something that you can use to get up out of the mud and keep things secure. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about going off grid, I can share with you something that uh, everybody will tell you as the solution to nearly every problem you have, and it is electricity. But you don't have any. So you're going to have to be a little more ingenuitive and look for ways to protect yourself, take care of your daily necessities without it. Even though you may have solar power, battery power, generator power, things like that, you can't solve every problem with power. For example, winter time, everybody's solution. I can't tell you how many times we've heard the answer, oh, just get this device which requires power. You don't have it. So it is self-inflicted. We're not implying that everybody should do this. But the point is you have to think a little bit more out of the box because you have to find ways to get all this stuff done without electricity. So just heads up, that's coming your way. The next problem we started running to into is uh, moisture buildup inside the cabin. We kind of already knew that was going to be a challenge because we're using propane for most of our heat, cooking, hot water, etc. Plus we breathe and sweat and perspire and take showers. So we already knew it was going to be a struggle. So since we're not running the wood stove all the time, it's not as effective obviously at clearing the moisture out of the cabin. So what we do is we fire the wood stove up for about a day and we just burn it as hot as we can. It gets it nice and warm in here, pulls all that moisture out of here, and then we exhaust that air. So that's one of the ways we've been able to reduce the moisture in the cabin effectively. Something else that we found really helpful was having a thermometer, but not just outside, inside and keep them fairly close to each other. In fact, we put a thermometer near the wood stove direction in the cabin and one at the other end of the tent. That way we could kind of monitor the temperature from end to end because obviously you're going to have a hot and a cold side, but we also wanted to monitor the temperature outside and kind of compare what's going on. That information found it really helpful to decide not to burn so much wood. So for example, if it's 32 to 35 degrees outside, we don't have anything to worry about. Until it gets down to about 22 degrees, then we need to start paying attention. The thermometer inside is really helpful because it's amazing how much just putting a cover over something will keep the air temperature from affecting it so much. So even the low temperatures overnight don't drag the temperatures inside the cabin down that much. Even if it's say 25 degrees outside, it might still be about 32 to 33 degrees inside. So that's a, little, a quick tip for you. The next project that we worked on was insulating. How much insulation do you need? I don't know. So we just kept insulating until we were comfortable. We actually were able to acquire a lot of this insulation from uh, a reclaimed opportunity. Somebody had tons and tons of insulation available. So we grabbed it up in the fall, threw it in the storage building. Turns out we needed it. So we used some of it to uh, insulate the cabin, but then we started putting it on the tent also. This is extremely low tech. We used a string and a stick. And that is all that's holding that insulation uh, on the tent. But it's enough that when we burn the wood stove, it stays warm in here. So 
How much insulation do you need? We don't know the answer to that question, but you might want to just try and stop when you have what you need. I think it's human to go overboard and go crazy with insulation until you think you're never going to freeze in your entire life. That might not be that practical though if you're just starting out. So I think in the end we used somewhere around five bales of insulation a total cost of around $150 to insulate our tent. And it keeps us uh, from freezing. So hopefully that'll help you. If you've watched our other videos, you probably know that we use water jugs to transport our drinking and other water. But of course, it's subject to freezing when it's in a container above ground. So the way that we keep that from uh, becoming a problem is on these super cold nights, or if we have long uh, Arctic blasts, we just keep the, the jugs near the wood stove. Do we put them on the wood stove? No. Do they melt? No. Do they catch on fire? No. We simply keep them near the heat source so that they stay thawed out. So use your best judgment if you have a situation like this and keep your water above freezing. All right, a sensitive topic, pooping in the winter. So as you probably know, if you've watched our other videos, we had a septic system installed and we got it done in the nick of time. Probably within three to four days, we had our first snowfall, which would have made the ground too mucky to even work in with backhoes. Probably could have been done, but this company didn't want to do it. They wanted it done before winter, we got it done. But we made a small mistake. We had them put in a temporary drain here so that we can uh, just simply hook our RV up to it, kind of like an RV outlet. But we had them put it on the outside. Don't ask me why I think that was a good idea. It wasn't a good idea. And it dawned on us pretty quickly we shouldn't have done that. Thankfully, we just added a small length of pipe and moved the, uh, the dump inside our tent here. So now we have basically an RV dump in there. The nice thing is we don't have to port or transport any of this stuff. We have a high quality RV dump hose. It's hooked in just like you would at an RV park. Everything works fine. So one small problem, early on we were trying to work on insulating the tent and the cabin. I'll describe that a little more in detail in a second. But what we didn't know is we didn't have enough insulation and we started to freeze up a little bit. So as a temporary solution, when we hit zero or about there, uh, temperature outside, we actually add a little bit of antifreeze to our septic tank and our gray water tank. We add about a quart. This product is about $3 a gallon or so. It's not super ideal for your septic tank. For all you septic gurus out there, we're aware of this, but it's better than having a frozen septic tank. So we add about a quart of this immediately after we dump the tank and then we add about a gallon of water to the tank. That makes sure that you've got some, some uh, water with antifreeze down near the valve. That way the valve is easy to open. So this is our solution. We've been using this. It's a minus 50 antifreeze. They actually have a minus 100 antifreeze, which is just a more concentrated version of this. And we have our septic dump inside and it's all plumbed in just like an RV park. So it doesn't stink. It's not dirty. It's not icky or gross or any of those things. It's very easy to take care of but we don't actually leave our tanks open. We keep them closed and we only dump them when it's time to, uh, to empty. That keeps uh, the, the, the odors, the stinky poo and all that stuff from coming back up through your system and out your vents, which would be gross. So that's a small RVing tip for you. Keep your tanks closed until you need to empty them, empty them and then close them. And if it's during the winter time, add a little bit of antifreeze. Something that we did, but we didn't really know how well it would work out, was purchase this RV garage in a box. We purchased this, I think, at Home Depot, and it was around $500. Initially, it was only to keep our RV dry. Turns out, it's become our winter home, and it's done very, very well. It is designed with an alpine-type roof pitch, so the snow, when it has snowed a lot, which it has snowed maybe a foot in the night, it sheds the snow very easily. It has kept us dry. It survived 70 mile an hour winds, something like that. So it's very durable. What we did was we put it on a small foundation. There's pier blocks with four by six pressure treat uh, posts laying underneath of it to give it a little more height. And then we put a skirt around the, the perimeter. All we used was reclaimed soffits. So if you have any soffits laying around, they make a fantastic skirting. It's kept the rain, the wind, the moisture, pets, animals, mice, everything out of our structure. So, Shelter Logic seems to be a great brand for us. If you're looking for something like this to keep your RV protected during winter, we highly recommend you look at their product line. 
All right, that wraps it up. Thanks for joining us for this second off-grid living first winter uh, tips video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe right here. We'll put a button right there if you haven't already. And please follow us over on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. We do a lot of uh, full blog posts over there where you can learn it more in detail about these topics. And also Facebook and Instagram. If you enjoy those channels, we do uh, micro posts over there, smaller things uh, that don't make it to the blog or YouTube. So if you like those, please follow us. You'll find a link in the description below. And we'll see you next time.